Yeah, this shot, speaking of which, starting to make a whole lot of sense. Hunter x Hunter season, season one, episode 29. Crushed by psychic energy in a hallway. Awakening X and X potential. Here we go into the Nen rabbit hole. I don't, should we like get some practice or something? Or else they can't move up the pagoda. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather die than not advance to 200. And universe. Although everyone has it. I don't know how to say this. Okay, we have two hours, so chop chop. Sink or swim. Throw him into water. What in the George Lucas? <laughs> Do we really need the midichlorians? I think I know the term for the day. I don't... okay. <laughs> Alright. God, the lurking was creepy enough. Now he's blasting his energy into boys' holes. <laughs> Keep your micro poles tight. No time. Give me the spark notes, teach. This is my style. Just throw me in. Throw me into it. We don't got time for whiteboards. Uh, Alright, you're wasting a lot of precious time here. Just do it. Blast my micro poles. And you know who is evil? Hisoka. And it could be lethal. Yeah, there's never a doubt about that. I mean, no one cares about death in this world. Murder is allowed in an exam. It's surely allowed in a tournament, even off hours. I feel like this world has just given up on police. If you have Nen, why would you become a police officer when you could do this? I feel like it's pretty obvious that Kalua and Gon already have a lot of this, though. They just don't know about it. It's not articulated, so it's there's waste there. If there's a connection between Nen and will and focus, orientation, Gon and Kalua are not normal people in that regard, obviously. <laughs> Oh yeah, we are solidly out of NPC territory. No wonder the lady in the clown hat looks so tired. I believe it. <laughs> it was already weird enough before the... <laughs> what? Oh god, this is just ripe for misinterpretation. Okay, at least we're wearing clothes. Why do they have to be turned away? Why do they have to have their backs to him? Why does Wing Wing creep me out so much? That's what it was. Your aura. Interesting that it's white. That's what you do with it, I guess. They just got an MP bar. The creepy music doesn't help at all either. It's such a cool concept with so much potential, but I'm getting so many mixed signals, which I guess makes sense because it's not inherently a good thing, right? It's just like energy and power. This is so cool. Huh, <laughs> six months. Give us six minutes.
they were already there. And I, like, I feel it's one of those things I was talking about this last episode. Sometimes they're, you're there before you know you're there. You just need that final spark, that click that makes it tangible, wherever that comes from. But like, you, you almost can't learn something deep or profound unless it's already floating there, waiting to be condensed into something real. Gon and Klua obviously have that. If I had to attribute that to something, I wouldn't even put it on physical ability or prowess. I think it's something much more relatable. The way I would put it is something like what they've been focusing on. They both have had such a high level of reach from the time they were kids. You can be pushed into higher cognition, I think, early from necessity. It's one of the potential positives of a difficult childhood experience is that we're wired for survival and the more complex your environment when you're young, the earlier your brain starts to work to problem solve and abstract and think about the world and strategize. Although it took me a very, very long time to come to a good place with this, from where I'm standing now, I'm grateful that my childhood was in some ways difficult. Materially, it was not difficult at all, but I'd say socially, familially, it was difficult. I think that's sort of the wheels turning earlier, thinking about other people, thinking about myself, my own role, danger, etc. Kluo was dealing with the very high and mercenary demands of his family, and Gon was fending with just like solitude, raising himself. No doubt. Good luck. Total focus. And then Zushi just died in the background as collateral damage. You know, I have thought about this learning strategy. It's not the best, most likely, but I really like doing a broad survey of everything or as much as possible before I get in and do the really gritty detailed work. I think it can be useful to understand the, the landscape and have things not quite learned or memorized, but introduced so that when you do go over them in detail, when they come up again, they click faster. I've experienced that with language, right? Like I'll just learn way more words than I should be learning or that I can retain. But then going back and doing it individually, it turns out amazingly that some of them have already just stuck and others I can learn much faster because there's already been that seed planted. That's kind of how this feels to me. They're not mastering it in this moment, right? But they're getting a, a survey. And Hisoka just waits in this hallway erotically. What they don't know is that this makes them in more danger from Hisoka. I'm going to punch you in the face. Punch you in the face. <laughs> Why are you punching me? This kid. Crazy that Hisoka is an enemy and also a guardian. I don't think they know what that means. Oh yeah, here we go. This feels fundamentally different from the exam contestants, except for Hisoka. Okay, so that's the that is insanely useful and a huge relief. That's a lot. That's not bad, you just need a winning record. I wonder who they are. I do. I understand I was greatly underestimating how cool this tournament arc would be. <laughs> At first I was like, what? No Kurapika and Leorio? Probably gonna be a couple episodes. Now we got 45 floor masters to beat and Ahsoka. And a whole nan to learn. Leorio, meanwhile, off somewhere fumbling books. <laughs> Leorio maybe just never, never catching up at this point, but who knows. It is like Pokemon, it's the Elite Four. The Olympics. Yeah, we just came to punch Soka in the face, though. What kind of rooms we get? We define our own honor. Not impressed. Oh no. Oh no. Your penthouse is nothing to us. <laughs> Robbed of motivation. 
They're bigger than this. They are already making their own values and priorities. It was never going to be material. There's so much more at stake. So I mentioned my recent experience with the new job, totally by random chance and coincidence. I'm way outside of my, my league and I'm in sort of an elite circle. I'm proud to say, and I'm, I got to be careful because I'm a little bit wary that this might be hubris to a certain extent in myself. But on some fundamental level, I'm very grateful for the feeling I have in this world where I'm really not that impressed by it. God, would it be great to have as an asset? but it's become clearer to me than ever before. Like in a very real way, or as before I could only imagine it, that's not it, man. That's not the goal, the highest goal. As the result itself, I think it would be great as a challenge because of how far it would push someone to achieve what you would learn, etc. if that's what actually calls you. But the rewards don't confer anything that to me is really that high. And I see that very distinctly in the people I work with. I would say they have better habits. There are certain personality traits that I admire, but it does not solve the fundamental questions of life, finding meaning and purpose in, in one's own journey. It does not protect you from misery. It does not protect you from darkness, which I guess is probably no surprise. Every man is flesh and blood and essentially lives the same same life or has the same challenges. I think the actual journey to be had is climbing to the top of your value system and your awareness about life and your understanding of it, your harmony with the truth of what the world is in relation to what you are. And the magic sort of happens in the journey itself, not in the rewards that the journey brings. Gona and Klua, I think, are deeply tapped into that. And also, are, are remarkably cognizant of it, even if it's not articulated at such a young age. So all these rewards are going to pale in comparison to the pull they feel from this journey for reaching the top of whatever that thing is for them. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good answer. That's our goal. It's a death release. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, uh, cheeky. What's his quirk? Fire hydrant. Are they floor masters or just regular jerks? <laughs> Speaking of Pokemon, like you always meet the gym leaders accidentally before you actually go to the gym. This guy doesn't really talk; he just kind of squeaks. I feel like. <laughs> In real life, they they would only occupy one room together. One room would just go unused. I guess they enjoy the material things a little bit. Gon's still practicing. Can he do it in his sleep, though? Is he ready? Can't X win and can't X lose. Like how her hat was knocked off and just never came back. They're really risking it all. Oh, wait, two minutes. Gone and continues to be a danger to himself at all times. That's what everyone figures out eventually. These uniforms are unfortunate. Oh, I was expecting water. <laughs> Sometimes the show, the enemies and their powers just feel like a roulette wheel. Oh, he gets text. That's how you know it's, it's dangerous. It's not really seeing a threat so far. Oh, okay, all right, there it is. Oh, he's a top himself. Power of Nen. And Beyblades. Well, one thing I know is that he's not giving up. <laughs> he's not He's not gonna quit, though he may die. Damn, this ending just gets more and more hype, for real. This arc is so great so far. Meanwhile, Lirio is studying. Yeah, they really faked me out with this firefighter, fire hydrant design. But it is what it is. <laughs> Some of these enemies, the result of an ad lib session. Speaking of Hunter x Hunter and Jujutsu Kaisen connections, I'm starting to understand the Jogo character design. This power system so far, despite having psychological connections, even the magical element of it, the aura stuff, I'll give a little bit of credit to. Not the visible white steam stuff, but there are meditative practices in which you can increase your heat, or at least the sensation of heat. I don't know at all how deep it goes or what the extent of it is, but there's definitely a mind-body connection in that way. It's not something I've 
explored in any great depth, but even just more generally, there's a tremendous power to be had in focus of any kind on anything. And it seems to me that it goes pretty deep in terms of the range of ability of that focus. Speaking of meditation, and I guess also going back to the psychological aspect of it, one of the coolest things about meditation is the, the strengthening of the muscle of being able to be aware of and observe your thoughts and realizing that there's a, a command center for them. You don't have to be dictated by them. You can be an observer of yourself, which is really, really interesting. Thoughts and emotions. And the more you practice it, the more exciting it becomes because you're seeing this whole layer of yourself you've never seen before. And there's a degree of freedom that comes from that, from even recognizing that that's a thing, that your emotions are not you, your thoughts are not you, even though by default, we kind of start there. Those are our system settings. So I intuitively understand the connection to power in that regard. Also, taking out the lethality of, of this situation for Gon, in general, I really like this approach. Like, throw me in a little bit over my head. Someone like Gon has the faith in himself and the outlook to close that gap pretty quickly, way, way faster than if he was learning about it methodically, step by step. He wanted to train to beat Ahsoka. I don't know if he'll beat Ahsoka, but surviving this challenge will be life shattering.